Uh, good morning and welcome. Um, my name's Rob Stefanik. I'm the Secretary of the Department of Parliamentary Services um, and um, I'd like to uh, wish you all good morning, uh, particularly the parliamentarians and uh, students from Forest School uh, and the students here from Music for Canberra um, who will sing the anthem for us here today. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people. I acknowledge that this has been a meeting place uh, for the traditional custodians for thousands of years. I also acknowledge the cultures of any Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people present with us today. It's my pleasure at this point to invite Music for Canberra to commence proceedings with the Australian National Anthem. Uh, could you please stand? Music for Canberra. Um, if you could all please take your seats. I'd now like to invite the Honourable Milton Dick, MP, Speaker of the House of Representatives, to make the formal remarks. Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Stavarnik, and I too would like to acknowledge the traditional on the lands, the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people whether we're gathering today in a pay respects to elders past, present and emerging, to Forest Primary School, ACT, that are here today, the Music for Canberra Choir, who sing so beautifully, to my parliamentary colleagues, which are here in the front row. Um, I acknowledge Assistant Minister Gorman, uh, the Minister for Resources, the Member for Pearce, the Member for Morton. I see the Member for Capricornia here, Ms Landry, and Senator Dean Smith. And if there are any other colleagues here, please raise your hands. Mr. Burrell is here, Senator Polly and Ms. Tanya Lawrence. Welcome to you all, and thank you to my parliamentary colleagues for attending today. To Mr. Alan Pigeon, a good friend of mine and a great friend of the Australian flag, Mr. Alan Pigeon AM is the chair of the National Australian Flag Association and two very special guests who have come from Victoria, Councillor Matthew Evans and Evan Evans and their family and representatives. They are the great-great-grandsons of Ivor Evans, one of the winners of the flag design competition. And I'll come back to our important guests in a moment, and Councillor Evans is a councillor on the greater, city of Greater Bendigo. Well, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we are all here to commemorate a very important day in Australia's history. On the 3rd of September, 122 years ago, the Australian national flag was flown for the first time, the day we now call the Australian National Flag Day. And it was on this day in 1901 that Prime Minister Edmund Barton announced the winners of a competition to design a national flag for Australia a competition that received more than 32,000 entries. And of those 30,000 entries, there were just five joint competition winners. Annie Dorrington, an artist from Perth, 14-year-old Melbourne schoolboy Ivan Evans, his father, his dad owned a flag-making business, and we're so privileged to have descendants of the Evans family here with us today. Leslie Hawkins, a teenager from Leichhardt in New South Wales, Egbert Nuttall from Victoria, and William Stevens, the first officer of the Union Steamship Company of New Zealand. 
And on this day, a flag 5.5 metres by 11 metres was flown over the dome of the exhibition building in Melbourne. And at that time, the flag was known as the Commonwealth Blue Ensign, and it was later named the Australian National Flag. Now, some of the key features of that flag that was first flown back in 1901 include the Commonwealth of Federation Star, and the star has seven points representing the unity of the states and territories of Australia, the Union Jack, acknowledging the history of British settlement in Australia, the Southern Cross, a constellation of five stars that can be seen from the night skies of the Southern Hemisphere and is a reminder of Australia's unique geography. Now, those design features are still featured on the flag that flies over the Australian Parliament today. The flag and flag mast on top of Parliament House, we all know, is an iconic feature of this building that we are so proud and privileged to work in. And we are so lucky to have this one on display. At 12.8 metres long and 6.4 metres high, it's about the size of two double-decker buses, and it weighs 22 kilograms. But while we celebrate 120 year, 22 years of the Australian national flag, we also highlight and acknowledge the official flags of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. The Australian Aboriginal flag was designed by artist Harold Thomas in 1970, and it was first raised in 1971 in Adelaide. The colours of the flag represent the Aboriginal people of Australia and their connection to land. The colours symbolise the people, the earth and the sun, and it's a powerful and striking combination. The to Torres Strait Islander flag was adopted in 1992. At the centre of the flag is a white dari, which is a traditional headdress. Underneath the dari is a white five-pointed star, and the five points represent the island groups in Torres Strait, and the white represents peace. At the start of the 47th Parliament, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander flags were permanently placed alongside the Australian national flag in the Senate and the House. It was a very welcome change. Now, thank you for all joining me today. I hope you enjoy our flag, and I hope you all understand the importance of why our flag means so much to our country and to our parliament. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I would now like to introduce Mr Alan Pigeon, Chair of the National Australian Flag Association and President of the Queensland Office. Mr Pigeon. Thank you very much. Mr Speaker, can I just say how thrilled I am to be here today? Um, I think this is the first time in 122 years that there's been any official recognition of the five people who won the world's first ever flag design competition. We call them the Forgotten Five because that part of Australia's history seems to have been airbrushed from, from the history books. And uh, the, the reason why it's so uh, it's fitting that the descendants of Ivor Evans are with us today is that he is the best known of the five because at the time, in 1901, he was a 14-year-old schoolboy. Now, can I just ask, do any of you have brothers or sisters or anyone have children or grandchildren who are 14 years old? Put your hand up. Well, you can go home tonight and tell them that someone their age was one of the designers of our flag. And there were four other people who, who had very similar designs, and so they all shared as joint winners. And the competition, as the speaker remarked, was a, a, a very uh, popular uh, uh, cause because nearly 1% of the Australian population at the time put in entries. And let me tell you, that took a lot more effort than just clicking like on your computer. You actually had to do a design and send it off. And uh, the fact that Australia chose our national flag in that way says something about us. When other countries have been formed and needed a flag, what happened is that the government officials went into a back room, selected something, came out and said, here's your flag, enjoy it. But in Australia, our spirit is have a go. And we said, everyone feel free to put your thoughts in for the design of our national emblem. And can I tell you that the nearly 33,000 entries that were received displayed according to one book, 
every aspect of Australian flora and fauna, sometimes all at once. <laughs> there was a kangaroo with six tails, one tail for each of the Australian states. There was uh, a flag that featured native animals playing cricket with a winged cricket ball. That might have been handy at Old Trafford. But the one that really has me intrigued, and unfortunately there's no representation of it, this could have been our national flag for Australia, is a, a kangaroo firing a shotgun through the stars of the Southern Cross. <laughs> well, luckily that wasn't chosen. And as we know, we have the design today that was um, entered by five people who shared the honour of designing the Australian flag. And the elements in it actually represent our past, present and future. We have the Union Jack symbolising that European settlement came from Great Britain. At that time, it could have come from another power, the Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, but it was Great Britain. And that gave us our parliamentary system of government, the rule of law, our national language. We have the present symbolised by the Southern Cross, which not only shows our place in the world, but is also very significant in Aboriginal mythology, so that it is uh, something that is in so many Aboriginal myths and legends. And of course then we have the Federation Star or the Commonwealth Star for our future together, our shared future as Australians. So we have been seeking to have some celebration for this unique part of Australia's history for a long time. In other countries, the fact that we had the world's first ever flag design competition would be part of national folklore. And the five people who won would be household names. So let's try and rescue them from the obscurity that they've somehow been put into. Let's try and celebrate that unique part of our history. Ours is the only flag that flies over an entire continent and it's the only one that was result of a open public competition. So can I just finish by please um, presenting the speaker with this video which tells the story of the flag and can I put a pipe, can be found for free downloaded from our website australianflag.net.au and I'd also like to give him a flag badge that he can wear. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr Pigeon. Uh, also, thank you, Mr Speaker. Unfortunately, as is the want of the institution of parliament, thing, unpredictable things happen. Um, and uh, what was meant to be a photographic opportunity for our parliamentarians on stage and the Evans family is now, uh, <laughs> has now evaporated, unfortunately. Um, but uh, what I would like to do is um, invite you all um, to enjoy the cupcakes um, and listen to the wonderful um, crew from Music for Canberra who will continue to sing uh, and entertain us. Um, for those of you that wish to take photographs of the flag, please feel free to do so. Um, I'd probably invite uh, the family up on stage if you'd like to come and um, get a photograph too, Mr Pigeon. Um, and any, I, I know Senator Smith is still here and Senator Polly, if there's any other parliamentarians still here who would like to come up, uh, please do so. Uh, thank you. I wish you all good morning. Uh, enjoy the day. <laughs> 